A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> The daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come, Silver. Let's go, the color. The two notorious outlaws, Lobo Grady and Judd Kohler, were captured in the Texas town of Armadillo by Marshal Pete Cooper and his posse. The crooks were locked in the cells which were in the rear of the Marshal's office. While his posse rode away in search of others in the outlaw gang, Marshal Cooper remained with his prisoners. A short time later, a man, gray-haired and benign-looking, entered the Marshal's office. He had a disarming smile, and his manner was at once timid and confidential. Marshal, lad, I don't know how to say this because... Well, because... Uh, well, go ahead, mister. What's on your mind? Well, may, may I speak to you alone? Well, there's no one else here, mister. But if you want to keep those prisoners back there from overhearing, it's all right with me. Now, what is it you want? Get your hands what? up. Give me that gun. All right. Here it is. Let <laughs> will take care of you. Hey, boy, it's me, Pat Pat. I'll get the keys and let you have the minute. Yeah, give me those keys, Marshal. Yeah, that's it. The gray-haired men released Lobo Grady and Judd Kohler from their cells, then led them back into the Marshal's office. I figured out this little trick myself. It worked out fine, now, Lobo. Sure did. Judd and I thought we were going ashore this time. Where are the boys now, Tap Tap? They're leading the posse on a false trail. They'll double back and meet outside town. Do you have horses? Sure. Yours and Judd's are where the marshal left them. In the stable at the rear of the jail. We'll get them and head south. Just a minute, Tap. Uh, hey, what are you doing to the marshal now, Tap Tap? Just investigating. He's still bleeding, but it's not going to be for long. What are you taking out of his pocket? Uh, his wallet. Yep, he has papers of identification in it. I think I'll take his badge, too. Uh, boys, I can think of a lot of times when a marshal's badge may come in handy. You ready to go? Sure. I'll lead the way out. The 
The Lone Ranger and Toto, traveling north, reached the town of Armadillo early that morning. The town was not yet awake, so the masked man rode through the deserted main street with Toto and stopped before the marshal's office, half an hour after the crooks had escaped. Toto, We'll drop in and tell Marshal Cooper we met his posse south of town looking for the rest of Lobo Grady's gang. Ah. It good him have crooks behind bars, them bad ones. Grady and Kohler are among the worst, Otto. Well, let's go inside. Ah. Marshal Cooper, where are you? Otto, look. Mistake, he must have been. He's been shot. And the cells are empty. Grady and Kohler have escaped. Otto, get the medical kit from my saddlebag, please. Ah, we get it. The Lone Ranger and Toto treated the wounded lawman, and when the flow of blood had stopped, carried him to the doctor's office nearby. There, as he lay on a cot, Marshal Cooper regained consciousness for a few moments. Laboriously, he gasped a few words. They... they go south. I heard them say that. Well, we were south of town. They didn't leave the main trail, that's sure. How many were there? Only three. Man, trick me. Me. Uh, we know the rest. Marshal, who was the man who tricked you and helped him escape, do you know? Tap, tap. They called him Tap, tap. He must not be him say Tap, tap. That doesn't make sense, does it? It makes very good sense, Doctor. He must be speaking of Tap, Tap Spaulding. That's a man's name, Tap, Tap. The nickname. His given name was Edward. But why? Why the Tap, Tap name? Doctor, it's because Spaulding was once a telegraph operator. Unfortunately, he was a crook before he became a telegrapher. The telegraph company didn't know that? No one did. Spaulding's always been able to fool people. Anyway, as an operator, he learned many things about shipments of money and valuables. When he had inside information like that, he'd pass it on to the gangs he worked with. What company find out? That's right. However, Spaulding escaped before they could arrest him. He's been an active outlaw ever since. I never heard of him before. Doctor, that's because he operated mostly near Dodge City. Same as Lobo Grady and Judd Kohler. They came to Texas Territory because the law was too close to them in Kansas. None of them are known here. That's why they're doubly dangerous. Marshal Cooper said they fled south, didn't he? Yes, that's what he said. I wonder if they really are heading that way. Outlaws headed southward for a short distance. Then they rode around the town and sped through the shale-covered hills to the north, where the rest of the gang waited. Lobo Grady spoke to his men. Boys, even if the marshal's men do figure we've doubled back, they'll never be able to pick up our trail in these hills. That's right. The ground's nothing but rocks and shale between here and Jocko City. I figure the best thing we can do is ride until we get into Indian territory. Plenty of pickings up there, boys. And what about grub, Lobo? We clean out of it. I'll tell you what. We'll be in the hills near Jocko City about nightfall. When we get there, we'll send Tap Tap into town to look things over. There's a general store there. If Tap Tap gives the word, we'll ride in and get grub either by robbing it or paying. Well, there's uh, something else we'd better do first, though. Yeah? What's that, Tap Tap? They have telegraph wires strung all along the trail between here and places north. We'd better cut them down. You mean that? Sure. You don't want the marshal to send word all along the line about us, do you? No, no, no. Then we don't let him. I'll climb one of the poles and cut the wires running north on Armadillo. It'll be days, maybe, before they find where the break is. I'll do it right now. At that moment, a few miles to the north, but on the main trail, a herd of 50 horses was being driven by a small but hard-riding band of Mexicans. The riders were led by the two handsome sons of a Mexican horse breeder and his American wife. The youths, Juan and Miguel Fierro, were the only ones who spoke English, and this was the language they used in their conversation as they rode. Miguel, the day is hot. Soon I think we must stop and rest. But Juan, we make such poor time. At the rate we go, we never will reach this place called Dodge City. Oh, I think you are very wrong, brother. We are very close, I think, to the schedule that Father made for us. Now, that may be so. Um, still, I am the impatient one. Not knowing this country, it's hard to judge what it is. Well, the horses, look. They stampede across the field. They head for the... 
<laughs> but now they stop. You see why, brother? <laughs> but yes, I see. They have smelled water, and there's a stream nearby. <laughs> oh, they stop to drain. <laughs> ah, yes. Go, Miguel. We do as the horses do. We stop and drink all to us. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto had left Marshal Cooper in the doctor's care and also left a message for the Marshal's posse when it returned. They had picked up the trail of the three outlaws, following the hoof prints from the Marshal's stable. But they were not surprised when they saw the prints circled around to the north. They're doubling back again, Tonto, and heading north. Ah, I'm going to hill. It'll be difficult to follow a trail there. It's all shale and boulders between here and Jarco City. We go after them, Kimasabi? Yes, Toto. So we'll stay on the main road for the first few miles and head into the hills after that. We'll make better time that way. Uh-huh. Come on, sir. Get him up, Tom. The Lone Ranger and Toto, galloping along the main road, reached the field where Juan and Miguel Fierro and their riders were preparing to start off once more with their herd of horses. The Mexicans reached for their guns as they saw the masked man and Indian. But the Lone Ranger and Tonto raised their hands high in peaceful salute. The masked man introduced himself to the brothers and heard their story. Juan Fierro finished. The horses which my father raised on our ranch are the best in all North Mexico. We know our American friends will pay great prices for them because they are wonderful horses. There's a great market for animals like those in Dodge City. I'm sure your venture will be very successful. That is nice for you to say, senor. Still, fine as our horses are, I would trade them all gladly for that wonderful white one you ride. Is he not a beauty, Miguel? Oh, well, the most magnificent ever I did see. The brothers and their riders, after admiring Silver and Scout, asked questions about the country to the north of them. The old ranger told them all he thought might be pertinent and ended. You should reach Jarco City about sundown. I'd advise you to stay in the town overnight. With these horses, senor, we should remain in the town? Yes. Uh, Todd and I are searching for an outlaw band. We believe they're somewhere in the hills above. Oh. I doubt that the outlaws would try to steal your horses, but there's just a chance that they think they're not being followed. Oh, but such a thing would be most tragic. That's why I advise you taking the horses into the town. You'll find a large corral behind Phil Allen's stable. Phil Allen. We remember that name, Warren. But yes. A good night's rest at a hotel would be good for you and your man after so many days on the trail. Senor, we thank you very much for the advice you have given to us. Will you not honor us by riding with us for a while? I know, thank you. Tom and I are going into the hills now. Perhaps we'll meet again on the trail before you reach Dodge City. But right now we think only of getting to Jarco City. Adios, senor. Adios, amigo. Adios, amigo. The outlaw gang had ridden hard and with great cunning. They reached the hills above Jarco City shortly before sunset and took haven amidst a great field of giant boulders. <laughs> yeah, we made much better time than I ever figured, that you? We sure did. Even if the posse did pick up our trail. Well, no posse ever could. I'm saying if it did, none of them would ever think we got as far here in one day's riding. Well, we got to think about that grub now. Captain. Yeah, I, I get you, Lobo. You want me to get down to town and look things over, huh? Yeah. None of us have ever been in that place. Still, it's better not to take chances. Yeah. We ought to make sure that telegraph service hasn't been restored between there and Armadillo. But you said nobody had found the car. That's right. Should take days, and we can't take chances. Not that we're sure. Tap Tap's right. So go ahead, Tap Tap. Look things over and get back here as soon as possible. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Night had fallen when Tap Tap Spaulding returned to the crook's hideout. His manner was excited. Hey, boy, that's like a good thing. We're going to be rich, well, real rich. But we'll have to work fast. What are you talking about, Tap Tap? What about Grub? We're we going to get some? I didn't bother to find out about Grub. What? what? Why? Why? Are you fooling? No, no, I'm not. 
But listen, will you hold here? Yeah, what is it, Tap Tap? What brings the biggest mother return from Indian territory? Red eyes. Now, you're wrong. That brings chicken feed compared to what you get for a good horse. Horses sell as high as $500 a piece there. And you come back to tell us that? Boss, there's about 40 or 50 horses down there in Jocko City in the corral behind a place called Allen's Stables. We'll take those horses tonight and be on our way north before anybody knows what happened. Hey, you loco. Horse stealing is the worst thing you can do in this country. We'd never get away with stealing horses. Yeah, and that many. That's just it. That many will be easy to get. We'll take them away just as calm and legal-like as if they belonged there. Well, as if they belong to you, little boy, you, Judd. What are you trying to get at? Tap Tap told of trying to send a wire to Armadillo and being advised that service was not in order. That means no one's found the cut in the wire. Just like you said. It also means no one knows about Bobo and Judd shooting the marshal and escaping. What has that got to do with horses? I'm coming to that, Judd. Listen. Tap Tap told of seeing the horses and learning of their ownership. He concluded. And only two kids speak English. The rest are Mexies. And for all anyone knows, they could be horse thieves. And that's what we're going to make them. We're going to make them horse thieves? Yep. Remember, Lobo, I took Marshal Cooper's badge and papers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I told you it might come in handy. It will. Hey, you boys have never been in Jaco City, eh? Ah, uh, you know we haven't. We've never been in these parts before. That's what makes it perfect. We keep cool, and we'll be driving those horses toward Indian territory tonight. But you still haven't told us how. Here, here it is. Who sends telegraph messages in code? Tap, tap. Who can climb a telegraph pole and by cutting in on the wire send a message? Tap, tap again. I'll send a message over the wire from that pole down near the road. <laughs> Pop Henry, elderly telegraph operator at the Jarco City Railroad Station, had jumped when the instrument began to tap out a message from Armadillo. Uh, the wire's working again. Here comes something true from Armadillo. By the time the message was completed, he was bug-eyed and hardly able to restrain himself. Jeopardy, jeopardy! Thieves they are. Wait till Sheriff Maxwell resist. Kale! Oh, Kale! What is it, Pop? You take over here while I go to Sheriff's office. Those Mexies are horse thieves. Stole the whole herd of horses. That's what they did. Skippity jobbity. Wait till the word gets out. Pop Henry ran through the main street of Jarco City, waving the telegram blank at the men who lounged in front of stores and cafes. Horse thieves! We have horse thieves in town! Those Mexies! By the time Pop Henry arrived with a message at Sheriff Maxwell's office, half the men in town were standing in the open doorway behind him. As Sheriff Maxwell read the message, Pop Henry turned to the crowd. Boys, those Mexicans stole that herd of horses they brought into Allen's Corral this afternoon. That message came from Marshal Cooper in Armadillo, telling us to hold him. He's sending another marshal named Fleming here with the real owners of the horses. Isn't that right, Sheriff? That's what it says here, all right. It appears like they took the horses, drove them out of Armadillo after murdering a couple of hands. And they cut down the telegraph wire so we wouldn't know what happened when they came through here with the horses. Can you imagine them horse thieves having the nerve to put up the horses for the night? Marshal Cooper describes the brand on the horses. The owner will be here with that Marshal Fleming who's coming with his posse. Well, what are we doing standing here? There's only one thing to do with horse thieves. Yeah, especially Maxi horse thieves. Clean them up. Yeah. Yes, clean them up. Oh. Light up torches so we can see. Let's go get them. Stop. Find the law in this town. We're not going to have any necktie parties while I'm sheriff. Now stop it. Come back here. I'm the law. As the crowd headed for the corral behind the stable where the Mexican riders guarded their horses, two horsemen came down from the hills in the darkness to the edge of the town's main street. The Lone Ranger and Toto had made a vain search through the hills for Lobo Grady's gang and were planning a new course of action. Toto, ride to Sheriff Maxwell's office. We've helped him at times in the past. Perhaps he... Toto, that crowd straight ahead. Look, they're carrying torches. Ah. There's something wrong there. Come on, Toto. 
We get closer to them and you see what's taking place. They'll never notice us, judging by the way they're milling around. All right, let's go, Super. The crowd, unheeding as Sheriff Maxwell tried to keep the men back, had become a seething, almost hysterical mass, bent on lynching the Mexicans, whom they dragged from the corral. Oh, no, nobody. Listen to him. Can't even talk so as you can understand. Them. There's two more staying in the hotel. Get them. They're the leaders. But you stay right here. We'll have justice. Out of the way, Sheriff. Hey, here come the other two horse thieves now. Juan and Miguel Fierro, dressing hastily, had run into the street to learn the reason for the riotous outburst in front of the hotel. Before they knew what was wrong, the crowd grabbed them oh, no, and roughly no. dragged them to where their Mexican friends no. stood in terror. Hey, horse thieves. Steal horses and murder good men, will you? Yes, senor. What are you doing? We are not horse thieves. These horses belong to us. We took them from our home. They took them. They stole them. You men, stand back. Get away, Sheriff. Here's a rope. Put it around their necks. It's partners of theirs. Get your guns, men. The Lone Ranger and Tottle riding fast pushed their horses into the crowd, shooting over the heads of those who held the lynching rope. Get away from those men. We'll shoot to kill if you make another move. You not shoot. Oh, 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 we mean it. Now, does anyone else want a bullet? Oh, no, no, no. Sheriff Maxwell, you know me. Yes, I know you. Men, this man is not an outlaw. He's a man who believes in justice. And there's no justice here if you try to hang these boys and the men who are with them. You call them horse thieves. Why? We are not horse thieves. I try to tell them that. You are too. Marshal Cooper ought to know. Who are you, mister? That's Pop Henry, the station master and telegraph operator. The shooting by the Lone Ranger and Tonto had quieted the mob, who remained sullen as the masked man and Indian kept their guns leveled. Now Sheriff Maxwell had his gun ready, and he made his way to where the Lone Ranger looked down on the crowd from his horse. Now these men they were about to hang are horse thieves. Still, I can't allow Lincoln... I to tell you, they're not horse thieves, Sheriff. Now, this man said something about Marshal Cooper. Now, what was it? Well, this telegraph message. I'll read it to you so you know what it says. Sheriff Maxwell read the wire purportedly sent by Marshal Cooper of Armadillo. When he finished, the Lone Ranger addressed the crowd and the sheriff at the same time. Marshal Cooper couldn't have sent that message unless a miracle happened since this morning. He was near death then. What happened? Yes, it's true. He was shot by outlaws who escaped after he'd captured them. Lobo Grady and Judd Kohler. You've heard of them. What? You mean Marshal Cooper had them under arrest? I didn't know they were in Texas. But they are. And they're somewhere near here now. But the man who shot the marshal was Tap Tap Spaulding. He's another one Tap-tap who I... Tap Spaulding, you say? That ornery skunk of a rattlesnake is the worst. Oh, wait, wait. Let me see that message. What time did you receive it? Just a little while ago. The wires were out of order all day. And that may explain a lot. The Lone Ranger read the message once more, then made a speech to the crowd and topped it by a suggestion. If you've a sense of justice, you'll want the facts. Do you agree that the message could have been sent in the way I suggest? I didn't know a man could cut in on a wire and send a message. Pop, is that a fact? It sure is. That scum tap tap spoilings the kind who do it. Then let's do what the masked man said. <laughs> As for you Mexican fellas, maybe we're going to have to apologize to you. And believe me, if we're wrong, we're going to do it. Amen? <laughs> there were a few men on the main street when the horsemen, led by Lobo Grady, Judd Kohler, and Tap Tap Spaulding, stopped in front of the sheriff's office a short time later. <laughs> Tap Tap, wearing Marshal Cooper's badge, led the way inside. Well, Sheriff, I see you have the message Marshal Cooper sent. I'm Marshal Fleming. Oh, yeah? We didn't expect you here so soon. We've been riding hard all day coming this way. We figured the horse thieves would head here. I just saw the horses in the corral behind the stable up the street. They're my horses, sure. Well, uh, this here is Mr. Gardner, who owns the ranch where those horses were stolen from. I have my ranch man with me, Sheriff. Ready to ride the horses away from town right away. 
My foreman. I'm a foreman. Uh, I'll get the boys out of the crown out here, if you say the word. Well, I'm not so sure the horses belong to you. <laughs> What's that? This message I have here is in Morse code. It says the brand on the horses is Circle Bar F. No, that's not true. Let me see that message. Where, where do you see that? This message says... You... Go on, Tap Tap. What does it say? Richie, the last man. He knows you, Tap Tap. And you too, Lobo. It's a trick. Oh, I'm shot. Hey, we walked into a trap. Hey, look. There's a mob behind the boys, Lobo. They're making up boys put up their hands. You get yours up too, Tap Tap. You walked into the trap you tried to lay for someone else, didn't you? Give me that yeah. badge you're wearing. That probably belonged to Marshal Cooper. It did. You and your smart ideas, Tap Tap. We were going to get a writ. You're going to go to jail. Be lucky you're not getting the rope that these people almost placed around the necks of innocent persons. Miguel, Juan, this crowd promised you an apology. Come here and make them give it to you. No, but no... A mistake has been made, and we well, do. I want to go on to tell you how ashamed we are. Uh, don't we, man? Yes. Yeah. We picked on you right off because, well, because you weren't one of us. Yeah, that's right. Right. But we'll never try to take the law in our hands again. And believe me, we'll never be prejudiced again. Hey, because... what's the idea of the speeches? I'm shot. Both my partners, Judd. We need a doctor. You get a doctor after he finishes with a few friends who got the same treatment from the masked man. He saved them for murder. And he saved you coyotes for the rope and the prison cells. And now after he does all these things, suddenly he is gone. Senor, who is that masked man? He's the friend of everyone who's in the right. Regardless of who they are or where they come from. He's, well... Doggone, he's the Lone Ranger. Thank you.